and say I've been saved. I've trusted in Jesus. And I've asked Him to wash away my sins. And, and that certainly is the simplicity of salvation. And I'm not eliminating that. However, there's deeper depth than that, way deeper, that we can understand through the authority of God's Word tonight. And I want us to take liberty to look at that this evening and see what we are free from. What does Christ set us free from? What does salvation mean to us? Turn with me to the book of John, chapter number 8, verse number 36. I quoted it already, but I want us to look at that. John chapter number 8, verse number 36. The Word of God says, If the Son therefore shall make you free, the only thing that can make us free, the only thing alone that can make us free is the Son, which is Christ. Amen. If the Son therefore make you free, the Bible says ye shall be free indeed. A freedom from which the world cannot take they can rob you, and they can persecute you, amen, but the world will never be able to take the freedom that comes to the child of God. But not only will they not be able to take it, but the world does not understand it. Mm -hmm. Amen, it's something that can only be experienced when we are birthed through the regeneration, amen, of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Let's turn to the book of, of, of 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. We're going to be looking at several verses tonight. Keep your Bible handy. We've come tonight to learn, to understand the Word of God. Amen. That should be the desire of our heart. And I believe it is. 1 Corinthians 12, verse number 13. The Word of God says, let me jump up to verse number 12. For as the body, what is the body? That is the believers, that is the church. For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, uh, because we are one in Christ, so also is Christ. Now I'm going to use some terminology, and I want you to understand it from the Word of God, and it's going to be found here in this next verse. We're going to reiterate it as we look at some other verses. But the Bible says, For by one Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, we are all baptized into one body. It's interesting what he is referencing as salvation here, Paul. He said we are baptized into one body. What does that mean? It's not water baptism. It's speaking of being put down with Christ. We are crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, coming back up, we live. Yet not I, but it is Christ who lives within me. We're baptized into one body. Amen. The, the Spirit of God baptizes the believer, and, 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 and he's born again. That's the born again experience when we die with Christ and we're resurrected. So it's the baptism. Amen. Aren't you glad for that? So when you read the Word of God there, don't get confused with water baptism. Uh, Paul was literally talking about uh, uh, being, being born again uh, uh, by the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible says whether we be Jew or Gentile, whether we be bond or free, everybody has to come to the same manner to be saved, and that is through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. And what he's done for us. And have been made to drink into one spirit. Amen. Uh, what, 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 what Paul is saying is we've died in Christ and resurrected. And, and who we are, what is giving us life. We need water to drink, don't we? We need the spirit of God. Amen. We need the spirit that draws us to the cross. We need the spirit that shows us that we are dead in our sins. But Christ can make us alive. Let me read on for a few moments. For we, for the body or the human body is one mem uh, it is not one member but many. If the foot shall say, "Because I am uh, not the hand, I am not of the body," it is therefore uh, is it therefore not of the body? If the ear shall say, "Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body," is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye. Where were the hearing, if, or, or if the whole were hearing, where, uh, where were the smelling? But now 
Has God set every one of them in, in the body as it pleased Him? And if, the, and if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet one body? Aren't you glad for the Spirit of God that saves every one of us? And we come together as the body of Christ. But it all starts as each and every one of us is baptized into Christ. Saved. Hallelujah. Thank God for salvation. Galatians chapter number 3, verse number 27. I'm getting somewhere. Just bear with me. Uh, the Bible says, For as many uh, of you have been baptized into Christ. What's he talking about? He's talking about saved. Uh, 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 re referencing the death of Calvary, where we are partaker in, in, in the death of Jesus Christ. Uh, but now he shows that he's living because he's resurrected from the dead. Amen. When we become a participant of the death of Christ, God no longer sees our sinful nature, but God sees us in Christ, and we are one with him. Right. Hallelujah. That is salvation tonight. Amen. That's when you define salvation. So when the world asks, amen, for us to better understand who we are in Christ, we've been baptized in the Christ. Amen. We participated in the work of Calvary. And, and the Father sees us through His Son and the work that was done there. Now put on Christ. That means that we have been clothed in Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse number 17. The Word of God says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, what does that mean? It means he's been baptized with Christ. Uh, he he, 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 is, he uh, uh, is saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that he is a new cre creature. He's a new creation. Uh, uh, all things are passed away. Whatever we were before salvation, we are no longer that. Amen. Behold, all things are become new. Amen. But now we are new in Christ. Yeah. So what does it mean uh, when the Word of God says, Therefore, whom the Son has set free is free indeed. What are we free from? I want to look at what real salvation is. You're right, brother. But there are five things that I want to look at in particular this evening that I believe that we are free from. You understand that when we are saved and God sees us when He sees His Son, Jesus Christ, and the atoning work of the cross, when we are baptized with Jesus, once again, God sees us in His Son. And you see, we are strengthened by a brand new power source. We no longer run by, by, by the flesh. We no longer are powered by the sin nature. Amen. But now we have a new power source. And it is the Spirit of God. Amen. The Holy Ghost working in us. And when we uh, 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 participate in the atoning work of, of Christ upon the cross of Calvary, He sets us free from a sin nature. He sets us free from the law. He sets us free from the flesh. He sets us free from the world. And He sets us free from the devil. I've told you all five things already this evening, but could we talk a little bit about these things that when we experience the grace of God, how are we set free from, from, from the sin nature? What does it mean to be set free from the law? What does it mean to be set free from the flesh? And what does it mean to be set free from the world? What does it mean to be free from the devil? Well, I want to talk about that tonight because sometimes I believe that we, we as believers, amen, well, we accept the work of Jesus Christ upon the cross, but we never really truly move on to be able to benefit from everything that Christ has done for us on the cross. And if you've been baptized with Christ, you are free. And let's talk about what you're free from tonight. So you're free from the sin nature. See, Romans chapter number 6. 
And I know I'm using a lot of scripture tonight. There's been times that I've strayed away from that, uh, using lots of scripture not to lose people, but, but I believe that we need scripture tonight. Amen. I believe that's what will minister in our life. Paul said it this way, talking about the sin nature. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Listen, just because grace is greater than sin doesn't mean that, that the believer has a free pass or a license to sin. Amen. He goes on down to say, God forbid. The answer is no. Um, so stay, stay away from such a thought. You know, those who believe that because they're saved, now they're free to do whatever they want. Paul already objects to that. He said that's, that's contrary to the Word of God. That's contrary to the way that God wants you to live. Uh, God forbid. God wants you to stay away from sin. He said, how are we that are dead to sin that, that sin nature, how can we live there anymore therein? You see, if we are dead to sin, it no longer has the power and the ability to grab hold of us with a livelihood. We are dead to sin. Uh, the, the power of sin, the sin nature, it no longer has a reign over us because we've been baptized into Christ. You see, when Christ died upon the cross, amen, His grace is greater than all of our sins. The work of the cross is greater than any sin. It was the, the sin that drove Him to the cross, but He showed that He was more powerful than the effects of sin because they laid Him in a tomb. Amen. He died because of sins of all humanity, but He showed that the power of sin could not keep Him there. Amen. He was raised by the Spirit of God. The same Spirit that draws you and I to the cross, the same Spirit that, that makes the work of the cross real to us and changes us as we are baptized into Christ. Hallelujah. So no longer does sin and its nature have power over a believer. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Because we've been baptized into his death. Amen. We put faith in Christ and in the work of the cross. Amen. And so the sin nature is no longer able to dominate a believer. Because we have put our faith in Christ. Hallelujah. We need to recognize that we are dead to sin. The word of God says, therefore we are buried with him. By baptism into death. What does that mean? That we've experienced salvation. We're baptized into his death. But he goes on now to say that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. When Jesus was resurrected, and he was new. Uh, there was something different about him. It was also to show us that when we are resurrected, we are new, we are different, we are changed. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also, uh, uh, in the likeness of his resurrection, there's no hiding that we are free from sin. And it no longer has dominion over us. The word of God says in Romans 6, 11, Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. I believe that this is where the church is falling short. Because the church is no longer becoming dead to sin. And they're no longer living in Christ. And I need to say that for those in the church who are not dead to sin, they are not saved. But for those who are saved, they are dead to the sin nature. And now they're alive. That's salvation, brother. That's salvation, sister. So freedom from sin. But we're also free from the law. Now, this takes place because it's a benefit of salvation. See, the believer has imputed righteousness given to them. That's a result because they simply put faith in the work of Jesus Christ. And I say simply because we don't want to make salvation hard. 
Because God made a way for whosoever will. So it's the simplest of things, but it's the most complex thing that God would make a way for you and I to be saved. And so we are justified from the deeds of the law. You see, if we had to live by the law, Brother Justin, I'd be a, 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 in a real pickle because I can maybe do the majority of it, but if I failed, Brother Doug, in one area, I was guilty of it all. And so none of us in here could live by the law. We couldn't get all of our I's dotted and all of our T's crossed, and we just would not be able to do it. So, Sister Tina, there would be that falling short of the law. And there are many that believe that, that because they're good people, uh, their righteousness uh, 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 in themselves has, has, has set them free. But self-righteousness and the law will never do anything for any of us. We have to realize that our righteousness alone comes from the work of Jesus Christ when He gave His life's blood and He died for you and I. I believe this evening it's all about Jesus and the work of His cross. That doesn't erase that God's Word doesn't give us a better way to live. Because God's Word does. But if you try to do the Word of God without the saving grace of Jesus Christ, you will never do it in your own strength and your own power. It takes a regeneration. It takes an awakening of the senses uh, that was lost at the fall of Adam. And it takes uh, the power that comes against the sin nature of the flesh to be able to live the way that God desires for you and I to live. In Romans 10, verse number 4, the Word of God says, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. You see, Christ fulfilled everything about the law. He was a fulfillment of the law, so you and I don't have to try to live by the law because we couldn't. The Bible says, to everyone who believes. You see, faith in Jesus Christ guarantees us the righteousness which the law had, but the law could not give. Amen. But Jesus said, I'm going to do better than the law did. I can give, I can have righteousness, but I can impute righteousness as well. The law could not do that for you and I, but Jesus Christ can. And that's why we are free from the law because He imputed His righteousness to us because we've been baptized. So we're free from the sin nature. We're free from the law. But we're also free from the flesh. Some folks may say, well, what's the difference between the sin nature and the flesh? Well, there is some difference. In fact, even in the Greek, the words that are used for it, uh, martia and sarx, is, 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 is different. And so when we look at that, we find that the sin nature is what was received, what we received because when sin entered into fallen man, the sin nature corrupted the creation of God. It includes our heart, our mind, our soul, our will. And then the flesh was corrupted by the entrance of, of the sin nature and, 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 it, and its terrible work. And so uh, uh, the, 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 the flesh you will find that, that your flesh, even though you are saved, your flesh can give you a rough time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all of us have experienced that. Even though we're saved and God gives us a new nature, the sin nature it, it is the it, strip of our flesh because our flesh has been affected by the sin nature. And so sometimes we have to grab ourselves, if you will, by the scruff of the neck. And we have to say, listen, flesh, I crucify you with all your affections and all of your lust. And I trust in Christ. 
I'm not even going to try to get into the specifics because they're so vast and so broad and they're so individualized and they can be so circumstantial the things that our flesh goes through. But I want you to know you can have power over your flesh. Because you've been baptized into Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The fourth thing that I find that we're free from is we're free from the world. Do you know that society is dominated by the sin nature? I want you to think about this for a few moments. In this world that lives by the sin nature, the world that we live in is dominated by the nature of sin. And they love to educate folks about the nature of sin. We call that worldliness, the things of this world. Why, well, just listen to a, a song that you hear on the radio. What's it dominated by? The world and, and worldliness and unrighteousness and ungodliness. Listen to it. Uh, there are things that talk about uh, uh, immorality sexually. There's things that's talked about uh, in, in, in taking care of the temple uh, that, that, is, that is God's. You think about uh, how that they pray self and other gods above the Almighty God. So they're constantly educating uh, through, through song and, and, and through the entertainment industry, movies that are out there, and through books and through all types of resources. Uh, it, it's geared to educate you on a worldly system that has a sin nature to it. So how do we overcome it? Sometimes you may say, but I feel so overwhelmed by the things of this world. It can feel overwhelming at times, but I need to remind you that because of our position in Christ, we have overcome and will overcome this world. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let them sing what they want. Let them entertain the way that they will. Amen. But it will not change the righteousness of Christ, which I have been birthed into. I have been baptized with Christ. I'm risen in newness of life. And when God sees me, He sees me as one with His Son. He no longer sees my unrighteousness, but He sees righteousness in me. And I know that I am free from the things of this world. Amen. Paul said, God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world crucified, the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. Amen. My train of thought is just different. I said to you this morning in the service, I was preaching of Jesus calling. And, 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 and the reply back, I, I need to go bury, bury my father. Putting worldly things first. Jesus said, no man having put his hand to the plow, looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. And looking for those that will follow me. See, what he was saying is, you got to let the worldly things go and grab hold of righteousness. It only comes through being crucified with Christ. I know that tonight I'm not preaching probably the most popular message. Not to you, but I'm saying in general to a church. But I know that preaching is right. That's what salvation is tonight. The fifth and final thing that we are free from, and that, that is we're free from the devil. See, the cross of Calvary. Often in my mind, I like to think about it being a big bad stick that just beats the devil over the head. That's a pretty simplistic way of looking at it. But it's a little more than that. Much more than that, actually. We're called to walk by faith tonight. The devil is going to lie He's going to trick. He's going to deceive as much as he can. But you know, the knowledge of the enemy is he knows he's already been defeated. 
the Word of God, Peter writes and he says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walketh. Uh, uh, your, your, ad, your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom he resists steadfast in faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. What did Peter tell us? He said, be steadfast, be unmovable. The devil's already been defeated. See, it was a party, I'm sure, in hell when they thought that Jesus died upon the cross. And maybe the devil misunderstood that when he said, it is finished, maybe he thought that, uh, he said, I am finished. But let me tell you, hell was not rejoicing three days later. Because they knew defeat had come. The devil was working overtime to trick and destroy people. Sometimes, and I'm closing, I'm going to say this in closing, Sister Beth, you come to the piano. Sometimes as a minister, my mind works the way that probably yours does. You know, our life experience and things that we go through in life makes our mind, the wheels of our mind. You see, I, I deal with a lot of folks who come to life crises And when I embrace talking to them about Jesus, oftentimes they'll say to me somewhere in the middle, we forgot about being faithful to the things of God. Achieved a lot of things. But they realize that they are just things. And that when life comes to a final end, only a life that's dedicated to Christ is what gives peace and answers. I'm concerned, very concerned, that some folks never come to the depth of salvation of knowing what they're free from. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? It means that I've been baptized with Jesus Christ. I put faith in the death and the resurrection of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I told you this morning, remember that time when you prayed? That's important because that is when in effect that you died with Christ. You were baptized with Him. And now you're resurrected in newness of life. And God sees you as He sees the work of His Son. We have to realize that we are free from the sin nature. We no longer have to be bound by the nature of sin. Listen, I believe in living a holiness life. So I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm saying. But if I think that my standards and my living will get me to heaven, <laughs> it will never happen because my righteousness will never line up because I never make it in every area. So that's why I need the righteousness of Jesus Christ imputed in my life. Living a certain standard won't do it. God calls me to live a certain standard because He imputes His righteousness to me. And to maintain it, I need to live there. God help me never to think that anything the law does will get me there. Mm -hmm. I will battle with this flesh till the day I die, but I can have victory over the flesh because He gives me victory over the flesh. Mm -hmm. This world my mind's growing worse, isn't it? Look back, reflect over your lifetime. What used to be accepted 
is no longer accepting that which would be far from acceptance is now embraced by this world and they promote it every chance that they get. God says that in this world, in this world, that we'll have tribulations.